So now I want to move on to John Locke's ideas on the social contract. Okay. Now, in two treaties on government, Locke explains that he too sees humans starting at the state of nature, but he did not have the very dark, morbid view that Hobbes had. Locke agreed that the state of nature was complete freedom for human beings, this liberty to act and live how one pleases. However, this did not mean we could do anything we wanted and every act was permissible. We must remember, although there was no rulers, this did not mean there was no morality. Locke believed humans were still bound by natural law, and using our rational faculties, we can see that we have natural rights. Locke described these natural rights as life, liberty and property. So basically, we cannot kill or harm each other, we cannot enslave or force each other to act, and we cannot steal from each other. These were the three natural rights all humans had. We were all born and created equally with these three rights. I see. Of course, in the state of nature, there is no authority to protect these natural rights, or to judge if any of the rights are being violated. And so here is where the population makes a social contract. We grant limited powers to a government to make sure that these three natural rights are being preserved. The role of the government is to judge whether any of these rights have been violated for an individual and to punish anyone who violates another's natural rights. Now, we may give up some freedoms in order to preserve our natural rights. We do give power to a government in order to help protect our natural rights and act as an impartial judge equal and fair to everyone. This would all be in the pursuit of liberty and justice for all. This is done only with the consent of the people. We make this contract with the government. We, the people, give the consent for them to have the power to punish us, providing our natural rights are being safeguarded. Yes, I understand. So, we can see the main difference between Locke and Hobbes is that Locke did not advocate for unlimited power of the sovereign. Locke did not believe the government should have absolute control and rule over the people. The government was only there to protect our natural rights and nothing more. Should the people ever feel like the government is not fulfilling their part of the contract, Locke believed it should be permissible and in fact necessary that the people overthrow the government and expel the existing rulers. Should the leaders become inept or thoughtless in their laws, the people must repel the authority. This was after all a contract, an agreement that both entities needed to make good upon. If the current rulers could not fulfil their promise, the people should be able to get them out of office and bring in new rulers. Interesting. This is where liberalism as a political philosophy started to develop. The idea that human beings should be free to live however they like, providing they do not violate anyone's natural rights. Human beings should be free to live how they want, love who they want, worship what they want, without any interference from the government. We see Locke's theory prominent in liberal democracies too, where the people can contribute and give their consent to a ruling party and president, and we all have the power to expel these rulers if we believe they are not doing a good job. A great political theory, and one that seems very desirable. But of course, there are still some issues I would like to raise. Go ahead. From a meta-ethical perspective, where exactly does Locke's natural laws and natural rights come from? Is this from a rational intuition or from God? There are interpretations, but generally natural law is seen as being God's law that we discover by our rational mind. Right, well, I don't want to hold debate over natural law, we have already done that, but there are issues with this theory. So to just start from the point that life, liberty and property are natural rights is not self-evident. Fair enough. Secondly, the idea of overthrowing the government when the people feel they are not doing a good job can actually be quite dangerous. 
How so? Whilst I don't like the idea of an absolute ruler that we must obey no matter what, equally being able to dispose of any government at the drop of a hat seems unreliable, especially if the population is perhaps spoilt, greedy, unrealistic or ignorant. At any moment, if the people feel they are not happy with the government, they can overthrow them. This will create a very unstable environment. Nothing would get done as leadership would constantly change, progress would be stagnant. I don't think this is such a problem. People are, after all, self-interested and rational. They wouldn't create such a tough environment for their leaders at their own expense. The right to expel rulers is only meant to safeguard against tyranny. Yes, I do understand, but still, a constant change in leadership is possible and unstable. I doubt this is a very big threat. Thank you for watching this clip from Philosophy Vibe. If you did enjoy, then please watch the full video linked below. Also, don't forget to like and share, and for more philosophical debates and discussions, please subscribe to the channel.